Fighting for disability is, is actually could be fairly straightforward. Um, there are documents that are called advanced directives um, where people can basically um, choose people to make decisions on their behalf. And, they, and that's for medical decisions, you have healthcare proxy. And for financial decisions, you have a power of attorney. And a power of attorney um, is a document that should be generally done with an, with an attorney because there's many ways to modify it. And from the perspective of an artist or anybody, um, you can put specific clauses in your power of attorney to even specify who would be in charge of negotiating contracts on your behalf um, if you were to become incapacitated. And it's it's a very important document to think through um, and you can separate your personal. So for instance, I've worked with people who might choose an agent under the power of attorney who would manage their personal affairs, so paying their bills or doing real estate transactions. But that person might not necessarily have the expertise to manage their business affairs or their artistic affairs. Um, so you might specify a different person to do that. Um, and so a power of attorney form, it's, it's on the one hand not a complicated document, on the other hand um, it can do so much. Um, it does not even have to be when a person becomes incapacitated. There's, uh, you can have a power of attorney and agent step in even if, for instance, a person is temporarily um, undergoing surgery and they're just not physically able to, to do something um, or they're traveling. So there's many ways that it can be tailored to meet the specific needs. And it really goes into doing all the things that everyone here is talking about, negotiating contracts, um, entering into business deals, even going into your checking account to pay your bills. Um, so that's a power of attorney. Uh, but there are more sophisticated ways to do that type of planning for disability, and that would include something such as setting up a living trust. And I think if people have artwork that they um, want to plan both for them the next step, which is you know once, once they pass, Setting up a trust is one way to um, have all of your assets in one place with trustees who are managing it, and then there's a more um, seamless transition once the person dies. Do I have a few minutes to talk about the next stage, or are we? Yes. Okay. Um, but I, in planning for um, when a person dies, when I speak with artists about their artistic legacy, and I've worked with people who don't necessarily have their, their artwork may not be valuable right now. Um, and I love working with those people because I think the idea is that you don't know. I don't know if anyone here, um, I know that Elizabeth knows, uh, there was an article a few months ago about Vivian Mayer, the photographer. And so during her life, her photos didn't have much value, but when she died, they skyrocketed um, for different reasons, but she didn't plan. She died in test date without a will. Um, and now, basically, her estate is who's going to inherit her estate is being decide, decided by the laws of um, Illinois. I think that's the theme that we're having tonight. You know, if you don't plan, you don't put it in writing, then the government or you know, the laws are going to decide how, what's gonna happen. And that's essentially what's happening right now. Um, I mean, her, her, her story is even more complicated because somebody bought um, at an auction some of her, um, the negatives um, at a very um, small price and sort of invested in giving her a name, and now her um, photos have a much higher value, and he also um, sort of bought the rights from one of her distant heirs. Um, and so there's a question of who owns her work, who owns the copyright, and it's also possible that her work may not be in display in galleries. They, they had to actually take down all her work from the galleries and stop selling it because her estate is, everyone's disputing who owns it, and so, I think that's a perfect example of what happens when you don't do a will. Um, and a will could be a very simple, it's, a, it's also it could be a fairly straightforward document. Um, it could just be naming who inherits your work and who would be the executor or the trustee to manage it. And it may be the same person that would be doing your personal um, affairs, and it may not be. Um, you know, I, that's, it's a question of if you are naming your spouse, does your spouse have the capabilities of understanding how to manage your artistic work, um, they may not. And so, um, so I think that's probably the most salient point, you know, in writing. <laughs>